In this video, I'm going to show you some of the inner workings of the Spotify algorithm. And this just isn't a theoretical thing. This is based off of your actual data that about 300 of you submitted. A couple months ago, I made a video saying, help me decode the Spotify algorithm. And we had a form that you could fill out completely anonymously if you, if you wanted to. A lot of you listed your artist names anyways. But we've done some analysis on that data. And by we, I want to give a very special shout out to Mark Schmieder. Mark Schmieder. I'll link to his Spotify below so you can check him out. Um, but this information, you can get the actual report that we're going to go over uh, in my community entirely for free. You can find the link to sign up below. But we're going to go through all the highlights in this video. And it's really cool because this is independent data, right? This is not like a public thing. This is, this is we all did this together. So I think it's very cool. So this, I'm going to go kind of like the highlights and then back up from there. So this is kind of, this is the final plot Mark's uh, document here. And what this is, is a chart showing the expected or predicted values, his prediction model that he used analyzing the data. So what he did is he analyzed the data in a bunch of ways, and I don't know the details of it, I'm not gonna to pretend to know the details of it, but he made this model that could predict a Spotify popularity index based off of stream, listener, and, and other data. And the reason why that's important is because a lot of us have been saying for a while that the Spotify popularity index is somewhat related to how you get put on Discover Weekly and release radar algorithm playlists and possibly other things. So if you can figure out how to get the popularity index to a certain score, you can kind of figure out how you can manipulate Spotify's algorithm to a degree, right? So you can see here that these dark green lines are his model and the lighter green lines are, I apologize for you colorblind people. I'll zoom in a little bit. I don't know if that'll help you, um, but you can see it's very close, right? There's some deviations and some spots, but for the most part, it's pretty bang on. And somewhere else in this document, he talks about how the, the average error between the prediction and the actuals is roughly 1.5% or like 1.5 popularity index values, which is very, very accurate, right? Like it's not perfect, but pretty much you can he can predict what popularity index a certain volume of, of um, engagement will give you and will get into that in a sec. So if we scroll up a little bit, this chart here shows you what's the most important metrics to hit to get a to get a higher popularity index. And this is percentage here, right? So this is like a gain out of a total of one gain in these values. Don't worry about the technical aspects. But you can see the streams in the past 28 days takes up 80% of the most importance. Listeners in the last 28 days take up 20%, like almost exactly, right? Suspiciously close. And then listeners all time, streams all time, saves last 20 days, streams last seven days, days since, really, like all these other values. These are all the, this is all the data that we collected from you down to like number of blogs that covered the song and discover weekly and release radar streams. So like pretty much you want a lot of streams. A lot of streams will get you a high popularity index, but the number of listeners also matter. So this means that if you were to get on a playlist that gives you one stream per listener, like people listen to your song once, but you get a lot of listeners, that's not as good as if you get the same amount of listeners who stream it more. Now on the flip side, um, if you can compare two songs, if one song has a million streams from a million listeners, that is better than having a million streams from one listener, <laughs> by, by this analysis at least. So basically streams, but also listeners, most more things. And a lot of us in the music marketing world have been saying that the save rate seems to matter, right? But here it doesn't, or the number of playlists doesn't matter either. And I think the reason why is because the number of saves and the number of playlist editions you're on, those values really just directly impact the stream count, right? If someone saves your song or adds it to a playlist, that increases the number of streams you get per listener on average, right? Because it's in their library, it's on their playlist that they regularly listen to. So I think that's why, like maybe they're, they're not an important part of the algorithm, but they just help you get more streams and that's why they're good. So if we scroll up a little more, I'll gloss over this stuff in this fancy chart as well, because there's something very cool here. This is essentially a little chart that you can use to predict if you want a popularity index of a 30 to 32, which from my experience would get you on Discover Weekly, you can basically just hit these values and you'll get it. <laughs> so if you hit 9,200 streams in 28 days from four 4,100 listeners and get 500 saves, you should on average get on Discover Weekly. <laughs> and then also if you wanna get a release radar boost, 
in the first three weeks, right? Because you, you, can't, you, you can't get it after four weeks, right? So if you got these numbers, let's say in the first two weeks, 2,500 streams, 1,000 listeners, 375 saves, you'll get most likely an algorithmic release radar push. This doesn't say anything about how big that release radar push or how big that Discover Weekly push will be. But essentially, you want to get on Discover Weekly, just hit these numbers. You want to get on release radar, just hit these numbers, <laughs> which is um, fantastic, right? So there's a book, there's a other data in here that you can parse out like this. These are all the different metrics that we collected from all of you. Um, so thank you very much for contributing that. And if you want to go read this document, uh, there's a link in the description where you can we can grab it in my community. Also, my, you might love my community anyways. It's just a place you can come and interact with other people that um, that watch my channel and you can help each other and learn from other people about the whole music marketing thing, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, organic marketing, whatever. But I have something more for you. So I mentioned before that I, you know a lot of us in the music marketing world that that focus on spotify have noticed that there's something special about hitting a popularity index of 20 in the first several like two or three weeks and hitting a popularity score of 30 at any point like 20 release radar 30 discover weekly and so we didn't like I wanted to just have a more clear cut without like a complicated model that I could understand <laughs> because um, I'm not a, a data scientist mark is and so what I did is just a very simple breakdown of your data, because even though we have 300 data points, we only started collecting the Discover Weekly data later on. So we had about a 97 or 96 entries for um, essentially people who filled in how many streams they got from Discover Weekly in the past 28 days. So what I did is I just broke down that data and said, did this person get on Discover Weekly in the past 28 days? any volume that could be over one stream, basically. And then what, what was the popularity index for that person? And then I organized them by, yes, they got on Discover Weekly, or no, they did not get on Discover Weekly. And then I did a little plot. And so at first glance, it's like, okay, well, we got the yeses here, they're, they're higher. And then we got the noes here, and they're a little bit lower. Um, but what happens if we do the average of all the yeses and the average of all the noes? The average of all the yeses is a 30, <laughs> right? And the average of all the no's is under 20. If you hit a popularity score of about 30, you're very likely to get on Discover Weekly. And then if you want some even more numbers behind that, you can use Mark's data here to see, well, you want this, you can hit this. And I think that's very cool. So if you want to grab all these documents and get a whole bunch of other music marketing stuff, you can go join the community entirely for free. There's, there's no cost to it at all. And if you want to learn more about how you can actually Get these streams and listeners that you need to trigger this this popularity index and discover we can this radar check out this playlist right here that i have about how to use facebook ads to market my music which is which is what i found to be the most effective using facebook ads to market music and this thing down here this is my course if you want a more organized thing you can check that out right there anyways thanks for watching i'll see you next video bye